Welcome in everybody. Week 10 of the college football season is here. Cole Kublik, Simone Eli joining you as for the first time this season, we can say Auburn is looking to win two consecutive SEC games. The Tigers coming off their first conference win in the Hugh Freeze era against Mississippi State. We will chat about that and then talk about the Tigers now preparing for a game at Vanderbilt up in Nashville on Saturday. Let's go head to head. All right, guys, Cole Kublik joining us. And Cole, before we talk about the game and Auburn, let's talk about the most important thing. Uh, Halloween this week, of course, already in the books. Before we get going, do you like candy corn? Uh, no. Okay, good. Okay, I just want to make sure that we could continue to have this conversation and we could continue to be friends. What was it like to be out, uh, uh, of course, going out trick-or-treating with your kids? I know that for me, this is only the second year I've gotten to do it. It's so rewarding and fun, but it was freezing. It was chilly, but I, I feel like it's supposed to be cold for Halloween. Like, I, I don't know if it was last year or the year before. It was like shorts and T-shirt, and you're really like sweating, yeah. walking around. I just, it's, just, it's not the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. Kind of like Thanksgiving the last two years has been a little bit warmer than normal, and it's just not supposed to be that way. Uh, so I, I actually liked it. A lot of folks had the little bonfires going in the front yard and whatnot, so it just mm -hmm. felt more like fall. It felt more like it's supposed to feel. Um, the kids were – my daughter was a witch. Middle son was a ninja. Uh -huh. And younger son was Black Panther. Um, nice. He was he was a trip. He wanted to take a photograph after every house, and so he had his little stance and his his moves that he had. I love that. And it was great. It was it was a lot of fun. It was a blast. The the bad part, the disappointing part was my go to my my favorite candy would be Reese's Pieces, mm -hmm. and not a single one. Wow, that's. I mean, I scavenged all three bags. I went through everything. Like I even looked at a couple of the houses that we went to and. Not a single one. Nobody gave any out. So that was a little bit of a bummer for me because I don't really, there's not a lot of the other candy that I want to go after. Mm -hmm. So it's great for my kids, though, because I had none to steal from them. So dad didn't take any. It's <laughs> well, a big win for them. Reese's Pieces, I would say, are definitely the inferior Reese's product for me. I mean, Reese's of any form outside of just like the normal Reese's. So like the trees in Christmas. Of course, the pumpkin, uh, those are always the egg. Is number the eggs one. at Easter, yeah. is by far the best. It's even better than just the Reese's. But Reese's Pieces, I, I'm not a fan. I don't know. They're too crunchy. Not, not, not a fan. My kid, uh, my kid was Woody, and that was really cool. So he was, of course, Woody from Toy Story. It was really cool, uh, but until we got back, and then we realized that Woody's sheriff badge was gone, and mm. he's supposed to be, like, wearing that for part of his birthday party a month from this week, and we needed the badge. So I went back and looked for it. Uh, froze and couldn't find it so who knows it got picked up it's gone MIA anyways he's either going to be Woody he's going to be dressed as Woody for his birthday party without the sheriff's badge or we're going to get the one on Amazon for ten dollars but anyways guys let's get to the game uh Halloween in the books let's talk about Auburn preparing for Vanderbilt uh the Tigers coming off of their first SEC win Cole against Mississippi State uh and and, and Hugh Freeze said it best in that this game was able to give this team some confidence, give them a little bit of swagger now going into the back half of the season, and really it's some perfect timing. Uh, they needed the win more than anything, and and you have a great chance to now get bowl eligible and mm -hmm. and maybe even finish with seven or eight wins. You know, there are a lot of a lot of Auburn fans I told you about last week that were disappointed and, and were upset after the Ole Miss game, saying that we think that we were in that game, it was close, and after being in Oxford last weekend, talking to that staff, I can confirm that uh, the foot was taken off the gas for that okay. game offensively by Ole Miss. So I, I don't think that that was as competitive as maybe some people thought. So don't get your hopes down on that one. Um, the other part of that is you now look at what's ahead and there's a real chance to be seven and four uh, heading into the Iron Bowl. And if I would have told any Auburn fan that you're going to be seven and four heading into the Iron Bowl, get it at home, and you are competitive against Texas A&M, Georgia, and Ole Miss, would you be okay with that? I, I think 99% of Auburn fans would have said, absolutely, you're one under Coach Freeze, I'll take it. Like, showing some improvement late, getting Alabama at home, it's always difficult to play there for road teams. Like, let's go, let's see what happens. We'll let the chips fall where they may, and there's a good chance that that could take place. Still have a lot of business to manage and take care of. But there was a lot to build confidence on from this past weekend, especially at quarterback. So uh, I think that things are still growing. Things are still you know, finding their way with this Auburn offense specifically. You're getting some guys back healthy on defense. Mm -hmm. And I think it's making a big difference. Let's talk about that confidence building there that we saw at quarterback play. Peyton Thorne played the entire game at quarterback, and he was 20 of 26, uh, threw for three touchdowns, did a few things on the ground as well. 
Cole, there was questions, or at least maybe I questioned it wrong. I'm not sure. But I read some articles as well, and I was wondering, is he going to go with one guy into this Mississippi State game? And the thought was that it would be Robbie Ashford. I remember having this conversation a week ago. I thought, okay, he's maybe just going to put you know one guy in there and see where it's going to go from there. Um, it was Peyton Thorne. And do you think there was a conversation had maybe going into that game that was that said, hey, we're not going to break this up. It's not going to be a two-quarterback situation that maybe in the back of Peyton's mind gave him more confidence. I mean, I'm not trying to uh, beat someone's crystal ball, but what, what do you think was the difference maker going into that game? No, if anything, Simone, I think the conversation most likely was if you don't get your act together for this game, then we are going to go in one direction and it's not going to be you. Okay. Um, I, I think that was Very probably good. a more likely conversation that happened, and thus saying – you got to get the ball out of your hand. You got to figure out a way to just go ahead and take some of the chances that we're asking you to take that you haven't taken this year. Yeah. And Peyton Thorne did some of that. Um, you know, the things that I saw from him that, that gave me confidence moving forward was, like I just said, number one, letting go of the football. Mm -hmm. It sounds elementary and it sounds really simple, but he hadn't done it so many times this year that it had become very frustrating. Showed some confidence in the play calls, showed some confidence in the routes, and most importantly, in the receivers. Mm -hmm. There was four or five receptions in this game. If you go watch the coverage, when the ball was let go, the coverage was in phase, the coverage was there, the receiver yeah. was not open, but he had the confidence in where he was going to put the ball and that the receiver could go make a play. And uh, there were more than a couple of times that they did. Not every pass was completed. Sure. But more than not, the receivers went out and helped the quarterback. That also hadn't been happening a bunch this year. Mm -hmm. So... I think when you put all that together, especially with some of the read plays, whether it was keeping a zone read and deciding when to pull it and run or pulling a ball out and deciding when to throw it on an RPO, those were mostly good decisions, decisiveness that, that he showed to be able to just get into whatever it was, the correct yeah. read, and then go. He did. He was pretty good with that. There was a few times that the pressure broke down and had to leave the pocket. One time rolling to his right, he pulls up. And then, you know, fires a ball over the middle of the field. It was a little bit high for the receiver. Mm -hmm. But I like the fact that he didn't panic and try to make a crazy throw on the run. He just got out of harm's way, reset, yeah. made a good, made it, made a pretty good throw. Receiver would have had to make a tough catch, but it wasn't there. Second time has to roll to his left, pressure up the middle. Instead of just, again, making a panic throw or immediately throwing the ball away, he finds some safety. He resets. He delivers a nice ball and picks up first down yardage up the left sideline. So there were plays like that that I see that he hadn't really made a lot of this year. And you put that with the run game and how it got going. Dylan Wade looked good at left tackle. You know, Connor Lou looked pretty good at center. He wasn't perfect, but he's a true freshman making his first start. He did some really nice things. With the way that Jarquez Hunter ran, I think you have some things to build upon now if yeah. you're Hugh Freeze. And maybe even now that we're in the back stretch, you went faster in this game. And that was another thing talking to Pete Golding that he was really surprised about saying, my job was a lot easier not having to defend tempo when we played against Auburn. So yeah. – you can think if Hugh Freeze were to add that now and they can make that a part of who they are moving forward these last few weeks, it's going to give them a better chance to be successful on offense. Yeah, and I think like we said a couple of weeks ago is that there's a lot Hugh Freeze wants to do. There's a lot he wants to implement. It was just It's just a matter of when is the timing right? When is the team prepared and when do they have the playmakers to be able to do all the things uh, that they want to be able to do? Jarquez Hunter had over 100 yards for the first time this season, so a compliment to the run game. Of course, the protection up front as well. Hugh Freeze spoke about that on Monday. And now they turn the page to a Vanderbilt team that uh, is having a rough time, a six-game losing streak. They're 0-5 in SEC play. But Coach Freeze said that these guys impressed him offensively. What do you see from this team on film? You know, they've got players. I had their game against Ole Miss this past weekend, and whether it's Jaden McGowan, who I don't think gets enough touches, uh, number six, you'll see him in the backfield at receiver. Uh, I believe they should be forcing him the football 10, 13, 15 times a game. He's that yeah. dynamic. Uh, they have some freshmen that are making a big impact. London Humphreys at wide receiver, Junior Sherrill at wide receiver, Cedric Alexander at tailback. They're all capable, good players. And they really have, over the course of this season, morphed into – getting away from what they were a year ago, which was a lot of tight end, two tight end sets, compressed sets close to the football to now more spread out and finding ways to quickly get the ball into those playmakers hands. There there's a bit of a quarterback juggle that's happening now that that doesn't make a ton of sense in my mind. AJ Swan started it out. He was good for two, three bad decisions a game. It really broke their back a couple of times. So they go with Ken Seals, who's been there for a couple of seasons and it looked like he had sort of figured out how to stay out of harm's way and how to, I guess, manage the offense. I don't I don't view game manager with negative connotation like some people do, but he was doing that, and it was helping that offense grow. 
Uh, you also have a big physical outside wide receiver in Will Shepard, who, mm -hmm. again, speaking to that Ole Miss defensive staff, they were terrified of him uh, and what he can do in 50-50 balls down the field. So there are weapons there. Uh, the good news for Auburn is they don't block people very well. Mm -hmm. And some of those guys up front for Auburn are beginning to come on a little bit. And I, I think they'll be able to, to have success against the run, especially with how Keontae Scott in that secondary plays downhill. Austin Keys and the linebackers are playing downhill. They should be okay in, against that group. Some of the perimeter stuff I'd be a little bit concerned about, but Auburn's secondary is good enough to where the players that we just mentioned, I don't have near the concern with Auburn defending that than I would some other teams. Mm -hmm. But offensively, you know, you 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 should be able to move the football. I mean, this is a this is a group that just overall doesn't have the same caliber talent that sure. most other teams in the SEC do. They play hard. Yeah. They play sound a lot of times. But Auburn should be able to find ways to pick up yards offensively. Cole Kublik, you can listen to him on uh, WJOX with Greg McElroy, of course, ESPN SEC Network as well. Before we get to predictions, Cole, where will you be on Saturday? Uh, I will be. Well, I'm in Star. I'm in Missis the state of Mississippi every week this year. So just if, it's, if there's a game in Mississippi, I probably have it. So I'm back in Starkville. Uh, I think I've been to Oxford three times this year. This will be my second time in Starkville this year. Yes. I know I have at least one more in Starkville this year. So yeah, I'm just I'm just camping out in Mississippi. Like Maybe because I was. Move I was there. born in I was born in Jackson, so it's just okay. you know back to back to the state and where I came into this world. We're just owning it this year. I like that. I did not know that you were from Jackson, but you went to Homewood, so you eventually made the move. Oh, I was young. I think I was two when we moved to Homewood. Oh, I so, gotcha. Yeah, been okay. here most of my life. You. Well, they want to put you back into your native land, so I, I can understand that, of course. All right. Well, we we'll look forward to that game. This one, of course, though, it's Auburn Vanderbilt, a three o'clock kickoff on SEC Network. Uh, in Nashville, I have Auburn winning this game 28-10. to 10. Uh, I think they'll get their second win and continue to have momentum going into the back half of the season, lining up for the Iron Bowl. Cole, what do you like in this game in terms of prediction? I, I like, I'm going to pick Auburn again. And I thought last week that they could find a little bit of a spark and take advantage of a team that had some weapons down offensively. The one thing that I will say moving forward, Simone, is similar to what we talked about with that Ole Miss plan and that being a lot different than what a lot of Auburn fans saw, just be careful with what you got from this Mississippi State defense. Yep. They are they are a group that at times is a little stubborn, a little egregious with how they call things and how they pressure. There was a double A linebacker blitz that they ran over and 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 over again. It worked one time. They got Connor Lou on it with Bookie Watson beating him one-on-one -on -one once. But it didn't really affect the game many other times, so it made you wonder, why do you continue to call this? I think maybe they were just trying to pick on a freshman center, in which Connor Lou handled it fairly well for the most part. My point is, there are other teams that are going to be much more sound with how they defend you the rest of the season. So some of the things that we talked about are going to have to take place, and Auburn is even going to have to get better in some other areas to continue this offensive success. I just think Auburn will have them outmanned. I think the run game will get going, and then I think Peyton Thorne, with some of this new confidence that he's got, We'll be able to do enough through the air for Auburn to be able to get this win. Being on the road be a little bit tough. Obviously, with the construction happening there, it's going to be a weird place to go play. Um, but I'm kind of with you. I'm going to go 28-17. I think Auburn gets this win. Vanderbilt does have players that can create explosive plays offensively. And like mm -hmm. I said, I like that secondary, but they do a good job getting them the football at the line of scrimmage. And I could see them popping one or two off maybe a little bit late. All right, Cole, all good stuff. We're looking forward to it. We'll see if the Tigers can put two together before they uh, continue SEC play and then prepare for the Iron Bowl in just a couple of weeks. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to Head to Head. We want to thank our sponsor, the Alabama Cattlemen's Association. For Cole Kublik, I'm Simone Eli, and we will see you next week. Brought to you by Alabama Beef Farmers and Ranchers.